So Abel, I wanted to talk a little bit more about 5G Open RAN and how they intersect with private networks. So uh, maybe to start, we can talk about some of the private network work that Airspan has done. Maybe you can talk us through some of the examples like what you're doing at Millbrook Proving Ground, what you're doing with GoGo and this recent announcement with uh, Citicom in Germany. Hi, Sean, of course, yeah. I mean, um, I'll, I mean Private networks are, are as a market that is booming. Uh, I mean, we get a lot of opportunities, and you can see now in our press releases that you know we are we are really ramping up with private networks. Our solutions kind of scale up to the level of, for example, Rakuten and BigMNO. But also, you know, the nice thing of, of using an open RAN platform is that you can scale down to private networks, and we see that, that the opportunity from in networks in 5G coming up because maybe you know because of two main reasons. First one is the dedicated spectrum that some countries are, you know, giving to to the enterprise. For example, CBRS in the US, or we have in in Europe we have Germany, for example, with 100 Mex in sub six. We also have uh, the UK of com with sub six and millimeter wave as well. So this is of course like a like a very attractive uh, incentive for the enterprise. Um, so yeah, I mean, we have several opportunities that we have already posted. Uh, we have Millbrook, as you were mentioning, at the UK. Uh, we, this is Millbrook is a testing ground, and we were work we were working with them already since uh, 2018, and we developed their uh, 4G network. And now we're evolving that towards 5G. Basically, what they do there is like connected cars, uh, road safety, and they have like a you know like a very nice train track where they do uh, tested support for public services. Uh, we have a second uh, private network that we announced recently, I think it was last week. Uh, we partner with, uh, with a big system integrated in Germany called Citico, and we just won a private network there with our research institute, where we are going to you know, test different use cases uh, addressing industry 4.0. And we have another one uh, that is a special one because it's, it's a bit different as, as a private network. I like to call it like the biggest, maybe one of the biggest private networks on earth. Uh, this is uh, Google Networks. Uh, Google Networks is a company that gives in-flight connectivity, right? Uh, so you know that you can connect there and, and do your, and, you know, WhatsApps and, and calls. But of course, the, the the throughput normally in this type of service is not that good. And Google has the the goal to provide uh, office-like experience uh, inside the plane. So they, they, they selected us as the run vendor. So we are bringing uh, the full gear. So we're bringing the, the, the radio that is a you know, standard macro radio that we could use in any MNO. We bring the software, the CU and the DU, right? And what we do what we, with this special digital case is that the connectivity comes from ground to the, to, the, to the air. So that means that we have the antennas on the ground, you know, following the, the, the highways on the air of the airplanes. And these antennas are focusing, are focusing in the sky and giving 5G coverage to the plane so they can get you know, a few hundreds megabits per second with a very low latency. So at the end, you know, we could be having this panel, this interview uh, on a plane in the future. So Abel, help me understand how Open RAN figures into this. I, I agree with you. You know, the big opportunity for 5G is really this private network for enterprise mm -hmm. or industry, but in open RAN, is it just uh, the appeal in that the TCO goes down when you take that approach, or is there any concern from the buy side that that integration piece will be uh, overly complex or even just more complex as compared to going with a turnkey solution from a single vendor? Okay, that's that's, that's a very good question for for private networks. Open RAN and 5G. So let's see the pieces of the puzzle, right? First thing, why 5G is a key technology for private networks? Uh, basically, because you know the bandwidth that you have right now, right? We're talking about you know 100 megs in sub six, but we're using massive MIMO. You can get like gigabits per second, the same as as millimeter wave, right? So now the speeds are very fast. Then um, 5G also brings these new services, right? Like low latency, that is very important for Industry 4.0, right? All the things like related to robotics or connected cars, right? What also 5G, a key element for, for you know, succeeding in, in private networks is some of the features they have. And, and one key feature 
is network slicing. Imagine, you know, there are several countries that are not giving dedicated frequencies to, to, to the enterprise. So you can have, um, uh, you know, an MNO, the ones who, who has the frequency, and that can create a, a specific slice to this, to this enterprise. Because this is the key part that, you know, I think that it didn't fly private networks in, in, in 4G on previous technologies. It was because the data, privacy, and ownership was not inside the enterprise. It had to go through the MNO, right? So having network slicing, what you're doing is like you can move all the sensitive data, all the sensitive, sensitive what is called a network functions inside the premises of the enterprise. And this is what 5G brings. What does open run, as you, open run, as you said, is that now you have a disaggregation of the run, right? We also have like a standardization of the of the interfaces that interconnect all these all these uh, devices, right? The CU, the TU, the RU, the 5G core. So at the end, what you can do is like first of all reduce reduce the TCO, right? Because now uh, before if you go to you know to traditional vendors, you have to buy you know their hardware, their software, but now you only have to buy the radio, right? Normally the radio is going to have just you know. The, 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 the RF elements like the amplifier, uh, the filters, and then you have like just a low level of software, the layer one, a low, but then the rest of the software runs on your premises and it can run any commercial on the shelf. That means that you can run in any server, you don't have to have any proprietary hardware. So this reduces a lot of the cost. But also the important thing of Open RAM is what they want to create is like an open infrastructure to bring innovation on top of that. And, and in private networks, you can see a lot of innovation. They have a lot of applications that not related with the standard web browsing, you know, chatting and so on. They have their own applications to communicate, for example, machines. And these applications now, then can, they can fit inside, for example, the, the open web infrastructure. They are open APIs that can interconnect with what is called, the, the, for example, the, the, the run intelligent controller to collect data from there, for example, uh, imagine the quality of service or the speed of a machine at that specific moment. And then these new applications, software applications, third party applications can, you know, interact with the radio on a real time basis. And this is, I mean, you can think of creating like a, like a, you know, Android or, 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 or um, iOS systems where you can get some application, right? That, gets into the into the on, into the radio into the open run and collects data and interact with the radio on a real time basis and of course this is something that is really really interesting but this is the good thing that brings open run because one of the focus one of the principles of open run is to open up the apis you said something there that I'd like to circle back to uh, that speaks to this security question. You know, as it comes to Open RAN, obviously different vendors have articulated different perspectives on security as it relates to a disaggregated network. So maybe you can share your perspective on whether when we disaggregate a network, open and up the RAN and, and other domains, how does the security logic change? And then in the context of these private networks, uh, what does it mean for data sovereignty when you disaggregated the network, both in terms of hardware, software decoupling, but also physically distributing it with a R U D U C U? Okay. Um, first of all, privacy. With five G, with five G, I mean you you have, I mean more data ownership because two things. First, you know all this spectrum that you can buy, so that means that you can build your own network on your own premises. I mean if you look. The value of, of uh, in certain countries, uh, countries, for example, if you go to the UK, Ofcom, 10 megahertz cost is very cheap. I mean, you can create your own network. Uh, you know, you get this license in less than two weeks, right? And you can create your own network with your own frequency, with your own, you know, core radio. Uh, you know, in a matter of three weeks, one month. So their privacy is, is very secure because everything is in, is in the house, right? The second, uh, you know, second element is from 5G is this network slicing. Net network slicing means that, you know, you have maybe the signaling part is controlled by, you know, maybe a system integrator or maybe an MNO, right? This is not, I mean, the signaling part is not such a key element for enterprises. What they want to protect is their data, right? You don't care if you do an attachment or you do a better location, right? This is what it runs on this MNO. But on the on the enterprise, what you have to have is where the data comes from, all the applications, and this can be a slice that you know 
all these virtual functions run inside their premises. So I believe that you know 5G brings much more ownership of data than previous technologies. Then on the second part of the question, security, uh, well, first of all, when you look at 5G, 5G is secure from 3GPP, right? 3GPP is the standard that defines all the, you know, all the features from, from 5G. So one of the things they do is like to encrypt the end-to-end -end of the call, right? From the radio interface to the core, uh, to the to the 5G core, right? So you have already security on the 5G. Of course, now you have different boxes. You have servers, uh, you have radios, and then you have interfaces. What Oran does, Oran is, is formed by, by nine working groups looking at different parts of the, of the architecture. So some looks at the random interface controllers, other ones look at the, at the different interfaces, the front hole, the mid hole. Each of these group, they look at the security on that part, for example, on the management side. And if you look, I don't know, I think I lost track of how many companies formed uh, open, right? But I think it's around 70 something. You have 70, 70 companies, I mean, top companies talking about, you know, uh, you know, tier one MNOs, we have uh, vendors from the RAM, from the virtual infrastructure, from hardware, from chipsets, looking at the at, at all the parts of the security. So at the, at the end, you have many eyes looking this open code, right? So we can, I mean, easily look at threats. So I believe that Open RAM, the more we work and the more people are, are involved in Open RAM, the more secure it's going to be. So big picture, Abel, when we think about uh, multiple vendors working together to deliver an end-to-end -end private 5G network, what do you think are some of the best practices, both on the technology side and, and organizationally among those vendors that will really help us drive adoption into this, this big market? Yeah, I mean, this is also a big subject that we, we face a lot uh, with Open Run. Well, in integration and interoperability is something that exists, you know, from, from any technology, right? If we move to 4G, for example, at Aspen, we have to work with other RAM vendors, right? Because you are coexisting with, with, uh, with an, uh, maybe with an incumbent uh, vendor and you have to, you know, do handovers with them, uh, you know, moving multi calls. So at the end, you, you test these interfaces, for example, the X interface, also with different cores, IMS uh, devices. So. Interoperability test is something that we are used to. What happens with 5G now is that the RAM is the new, is the paradigm shift. Right? Now we have this desegregating virtual uh, RAM infrastructure. So that means that, for example, you have, we can call it, we have the software and the radio, right? We could bring the software, we can bring the radio, and of course, it's going to work because it's s and we do the testing cell, we, 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 with ourselves. But imagine that we have the software, we put some radios, and then in the future, the, 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 the private network or the operator, they like you know, some radio because it has more power or more antennas or less power or whatever thing. So, and they want to integrate this radio. Of course, it has to be some integration on that part. But again, I mean, as long as everything is, like, is focusing on, on, on open run, so we are, we are following the same guidelines and technical specs, uh, it should be a, a, an achievable task, right? And, for example, um, a couple of days ago, we were doing an end-to-end standalone call uh, with a 5G core standalone, right? So and it took us one week to achieve this milestone with our sub radio and this 5G core. We will try to publish this soon. Um, and, but for example, I think that different levels of integration. The first one, of course, is vendor. So ESPAN, we have a lot of partners like this 5G core or, for example, OSS or uh, devices, of course, and now radio vendors as well. I mean, we have opportunities where we have mixing vendors. I mean, we at ESPAN, we are, I think we are the, the when you look at the open road infrastructure, the only one who brings the end-to-end. -end. So we do the radio, right? So we do the, 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 the radio, but we also do the software, the CU, the DU. We have, I mean, at the end, when you look at the software, the radio has always had, had software. The thing we're doing is like, we're moving the software that it was proprietary running on the hardware, are we moving now to to uh, to a commercial of the shelf uh, server? But still, is is the software that runs the radio in the virtual infrastructure. So what we do now is like we see opportunities that they request our software or our radios from other RAM vendors that maybe they don't have a part of it, like for example the radio. So we have to do IoT with them, and we can do that internally between us. 
But I think there are other two levels. MNOs, of course, like Rakuten. Rakuten is a clear example of multi-vendor. It's been the first uh, open run vendor that we see commercially launch. We launched uh, the 5G part with our millimeter wave uh, last week. And, 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 and then the MNO is the one who is responsible to, you know, to push us in order to integrate the full, the full pieces of the puzzle, right? Um, we can see also what they see from MNOs, they're going to have like a catalog of software and, and, and radios, like for example, uh, Vodafone, they released last week their RFI results. They have different categories. We were selected as one of the main vendors for Massive MIMO on our macros. Right? But of course, you have another category that maybe is like network efficiency. So in the end, if they want to interact these two radios, we have to IoT with them. We have to do some interoperability tests with them. And this will be driven by, by MNOs. And then I think the third level, when we look at private networks, there is a new, uh, there is a new entity here that is going to have a key value that are system integrators. That's why it's so important for us to really partner with, you know, you know, important system integrators with, they have like, you know, the experience from the field from many customers. Like for example, they can be petrochemical, they can be like car companies, they can be in culture. So these are the guys who understands the needs of this end customer for the private network. So when we ally with these system integrators, we get the feedback of what is the use cases they need to, to do, right? So we can provide our, our equipment Right, uh, they have like again, maybe they have their favorite 5G core, uh, the fiber, the, 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 uh, the favorite uh, radios like us, and for example, this German system integrator where they have the, our 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 CU, DU, RU, it's away from sub six, right, and they have their own CPS devices. But you know, one benefit that, for example, uh, the the, the, the run vendor should bring is the capability to tailor to the final use case of the customer. That's why the system integrator is key because they understand how they breathe the, the, these, uh, these end customers. And this is the story with Gogo. When you look Gogo, I mean, uh, it's not, I mean, it's not just a big private network with, uh, you know, the full disaggregated open run, uh, architecture. We had to tweak our software in order to, 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 to cope with the Doppler effect planes, you know, they go 800 kilometers per hour, but three GPP specifies 500 as the maximum kilometers per hour. So we have to change something in the software in order to cope with this Doppler effect. For example, the cell range that we have at, at Google networks is much bigger because, you know, the altitude of the planes. So again, we have to tweak this software. So I think this is the expertise that, you know, run vendors has to bring like we do in order to win these projects. When you answer the, 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 the questions to, to fit these needs from the, from, the, from the end customer coming from the system integrator, I think that is key for that. And system integrator has this value to understand the end customer and the capability to put together the pieces of the network. So they're gonna be very valuable in, in 5G. Well, I mean, it's clear to me that there's obviously a lot of stakeholders and a lot of moving pieces when we think about 5G and open RAN for public and private networks. But Abel sounds like everything's coalescing based on the examples you gave. So I appreciate you taking the time to uh, talk us through how Airspan is addressing this market opportunity.